welcome to NLTV News Now. I'm Rinki Gogoi and let's begin with the headlines. Amid demand for justice for 14 civilians killed by security forces in Otting village on December 4 and 5 last year, a very minimal Republic Day celebration was witnessed at Mon district on Wednesday. Cognac Union Apex bodies and general public abstained from celebrations with flag hoisted in administrative offices only. Nagaland Chief Minister Nipi Rio and Governor Professor Jagdish Mukhi extend greetings to Kachari community on the occasion of Bishu Festival. While Mukhi remarks the festival fosters love, reconciliation and courtesy, Rio tweeted it would bring good health, happiness and peace in everyone's life. Nagaland records 130 new COVID-19 cases in past 24 hours, taking the active tally to 828. Dimapur tops the list with 96 cases, however no COVID deaths reported in the last 24 hours. Prime Minister Narendra Modi extends birthday greetings to Meghalaya Chief Minister Conrad Sangma and prayed for his long and healthy life. The NPP Chief and 12th Chief Minister of Meghalaya turns 44 on Thursday. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to host first India Central Asia Summit on Thursday in a virtual format. During summit, the Asian leaders expected to deliberate on steps to take forward relations to newer heights as well as the evolving regional security situation. Let's see more of the news in details. A very minimal Republic Day celebration was witnessed at Mon district amidst demands for justice for 14 civilians killed by security forces in Mon district on December 4 and 5 last year. The Konyak Union Apex tribal body of Konyak Nagas had initially directed the Konyak Nagas to completely boycott the Republic Day, but on request of the Nagaland government, it permitted the unfurling of the national flag in the administrative offices. As directed by the Konyak Union, no one from the public participated in the celebrations. The Deputy Commissioner Mon unfurled the flag, stated that the Republic Day concluded peacefully. Nagaland Chief Minister Nipirio and Governor Professor Jagdish Mukhi extends Bishu Festival greetings to the Kachari community on Thursday. Mukhi remarks that this post-harvest festival fosters love, reconciliation and courtesy. Mukhi further encourages all to celebrate this festival responsibly by adhering to all COVID-19 protocols. Furthermore, Rio tweeted that this festival would bring blessings of good health, happiness and peace in everyone's life. Nagaland reported 130 new COVID-19 cases on Wednesday, taking the state's tally to 33,948 cases and active tally to 828. Dimapur reported 96 cases, Kohima 18, Mokokchum 10, Kipiri 3, while Longlang, Mon and Woka reported one case each. Furthermore, Nagaland's death toll stood at 691, with no COVID deaths reported in the last 24 hours. Prime Minister Narendra Modi extended birthday greetings to the Meghalaya Chief Minister Conrad Sangma on his birthday on Thursday. Modi took down to Twitter and prayed that Sangma be blessed with a long and healthy life. Sangma is the 12th and current Chief Minister of Meghalaya. 
Notably, Sangma assumed presidency of the National People's Party in 2016 after the death of his father and former Chief Minister P.A. Sangma. The Arunachal Pradesh government has introduced awards for cleanest villages to promote the healthy living through cleanliness. A total of nine villages were selected for the first ever cleanest village awards on Wednesday. Arunachal Pradesh government officials said that on the occasion of the statehood day celebrations on February 20, the chief minister's award for cleanest village was introduced in each district of the state for ensuring a healthy, hygienic and lively social environment. The awards would be conferred to the villagers at a function later on. Winners of the award for the year 2021 were announced on 73rd Republic Day celebrations. Meanwhile, our Natural Pradesh Chief Minister Pema Kandu took down to Twitter to congratulate all the winners. Troops of Assam Rifles and Mizoram Police in a joint operation have nabbed three persons including a Myanmar national with explosives from Mizoram Saiha district. Acting on a tip-off, Lungle Battalion of Assam Rifles along with the Mizoram Police carried out an operation and recovered 2,500 kilograms of explosives and 4,500 meters of detonators from Zhongling area in Saiha district of Mizoram on Thursday. The security personnel also recovered Indian currency amounting to Rs 73,500, Myanmar currency of Kyat 9,35,000 and a vehicle with registration number MZ077936. Notably, CNF is a Chin nationalist political organization fighting for a federal union based on self-determination, ethnic equality and democracy in Myanmar and its armed wing is the Chin National Army. However, the Assam Rifles team did not reveal the identity of those arrested to maintain secrecy and proceeded further with the investigation of the matter. After much anticipation, the Arunachal Pradesh teenager Miram Taron, who went missing from his village on January 18, is likely to return home within next hours. Union Minister Kiran Rijiju on Wednesday said that China's People's Liberation Army has responded positively to handling over Miram Taron and that his return was delayed due to bad weather conditions. The minister tweeted that hotline exchanged on Republic Day by Indian army with Chinese PLA and informed that PLA suggested a place of release. Furthermore, they are likely to intimate date and time soon. Notably, the teenager from Zido village in Upper Siang district had gone missing at Shiyung La in Beijing area and the Indian army immediately approached Chinese side on January 19 asking for assistance in tracing and return of the individual in case he had strayed into the Chinese territory or PLA has taken him in their custody. Meanwhile, the minister appealed everyone to be cautious in making statements which are not based on facts because the safety and safe return of the young Arunachal Pradesh youth is the priority. Prime Minister Narendra Modi thanked world leaders for their greetings and wishes on the occasion of the India 73rd Republic Day on Wednesday. PM thanked world leaders from Bhutan, Nepal, Maldives, Israel, Mauritius and Sri Lanka. In a tweet replying to Prime Minister of Nepal, PM Modi stated that India and Nepal would work together to add strength to the resilient and timeless friendship and also replying to Mauritius Prime Minister's Zugnaut Kumar's tweet, Prime Minister Modi wished for the two countries' multifaceted partnership to grow from strength to strength.
Congress leader Rahul Gandhi is on a day-long visit to Punjab. Rahul Gandhi visited religious places along with 117 candidates in an apparent show of strength ahead of assembly elections that are due next month. Rahul Gandhi paid a visit at around 9 a.m. at Sri Harmandir Sahib along with 117 candidates in Amritsar. Therefore, the Congress leader paid obeisance at Durgiana Mandir at around 10 a.m. at around 11 a.m. at Bhagwan Valmiki Tirat Sital. At around 12 noon, Gandhi travelled to Jalandhar by road. The Congress leader will address a virtual rally, Navi Soch Nava Punjab, at around 3 p.m. at White Diamond, Mithapur Jalandhar. Notably, this is the first visit of Rahul Gandhi since the imposition of a ban on physical rallies by the Election Commission of India at the start of the month. आपको इस तरह हर एक हिंदुस्तानी का यह हिंदुस्तान है यहाँ की गंगा यहीं का हिमालय रिमोट Former Congress President Rahul Gandhi in his letter to Twitter CEO Parag Agarwal alleged that social media platform Twitter is unknowingly complicit in curbing free and fair speech in India. He has alleged that there is a shadow ban on him which restri restricts his tweets and the number of people he can follow. He further wrote that he has been reliably informed by people at Twitter that they are under immense pressure by the government to silence his voice and along with the letter, Mr. Gandhi also sent analysis of data from his Twitter account showing that his followers have been barely decreasing since August when his account was suspended for eight days. Replying to Rahul Gandhi's tweet, Twitter stated that followers count are a visible feature and they want have confidence that numbers are meaningful and accurate and that Twitter has zero tolerance approach to platform manipulation and spam. Indian government is going to hand over Air India to the Tata Group 69 years after it was taken from the conglomerate. After the government had a competitive bidding on October 8 last year, the company was sold to Air India to Tilay's private limited and subsidiary of the Tata Group's holding company for 18,000 crores. Officials tweeted that on Wednesday that the airline will be handed over to the conglomerate on Thursday as all formalities are close to completion. As part of the deal, Air India expresses 50% stake in ground handling arm India's SATs will also be handed over to Tata Group. While this will be centers First privatization since 2003-2004 and Air India will be the third airline brand in the Tata's stable as it holds a majority interest in Air Asia India. Vistara, a joint venture with Singapore Airlines Limited. Also, Tata Group Chairman E.N. Chandra Shekharan is already in Delhi to meet Prime Minister Modi ahead of Air India handover. Delhi government will hoist 115 foot tricolors at 75 locations across the city on January 27 to celebrate the 75th anniversary of the country's independence. The 75 tricolors will be unfurled by Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal. PWD Minister Satyender Jain said on Tuesday that the installation of the high mast national flags is being done by the Public Works Department under Delhi government's Deshbhakti budget to celebrate India's 
75th year of independence. According to PWD officials, the project entails the installation of high mass tricolors at 500 locations across Delhi, of which 75 will be hoisted a day after the Republic Day and the remaining by March 31. Notably, the flags will come at public places like parks, schools, buildings, market complexes, residential complexes and open grounds. Delhi CM Arvind Kajwal said that the spots where the flags will be hoisted have been selected meticulously to ensure that they are visible at every two to three kilometers. These high-mast flags will be set up on the lines of the 200 feet high tricolor at the Central Park in Connaught Place. अगले कुछ महीनों के अंदर सभी 500 जगहों पे 500 साइट्स के ऊपर ये तिरंगे लगा दिए जाएंगे। हमारा मकसद है कि दिल्ली में कोई भी अपने घर से बाहर निकले और दफ्तर के लिए जाए, तो कम से कम दो तीन बार उसे दिन में तिरंगा जरूर दिखाई दे। जितनी बार हम तिरंगे को देखते हैं, हमारे अंदर एक राष्ट्र भाव भक्ति की भावना जागती है, नॉर्मली अपनी जिंदगी जीते हुए हम इतने ज्यादा उलझ जाते हैं अपने परिवार में अपनी जिंदगी में कि कई बार अपने देश को भूल जाते हैं समाज को भूल जाते हैं यह तिरंगा जितनी बार एक आदमी आम आदमी तिरंगे को देखेगा यह तिरंगा उसे देशभक्ति की याद दिलाएगा उसे देश की याद दिलाएगा और उसे उन सब लोगों की याद दिलाएगा जिन लोगों ने देश को आजाद कराने के लिए अपना सब कुछ निवचावर कर दिया था। मुझे बताया गया है कि शायद दुनिया में दिल्ली अकेला शहर है, जहाँ पे इतने बड़े स्तर के ऊपर उस देश का राष्ट्र ध्वज 115 फीट ऊंचे राष्ट्र ध्वज लगाए जा रहे हैं। इसको हम एग्जामिन करा रहे हैं। अगर ऐसा हुआ तो शायद गिनीज बुक ऑफ वर्ल्ड रिकॉर्ड्स इतने सारे उस देश के उस राष्ट्र के राष्ट्र ध्वज इतनी ऊंचाई के लगाए जा रहे हैं तो मैं दिल्ली के लोगों को बधाई देता हूं देश के लोगों को बधाई देता हूं आज दिल खुश हो गया इस तिरंगे को जब ऊपर जाते हुए देख रहे थे मैं उम्मीद करता हूं ऊपर वाले से कि हमारा तिरंगा हमेशा ऊंचा रहे लहराता रहे और इसी तरह से देश आगे तरक्की करता रहे अगर आपके कोई प्रश्न है Delhi's air quality continued to remain in the poor category on Thursday morning. According to the system of air quality and weather forecasting and research, overall air quality index in the national capital was recorded at 262. Meanwhile, the India Meteorological Department on Wednesday predicted cold wave conditions in isolated pockets of Delhi for the next three to four days. Notably, the minimum temperature in Delhi was recorded at 6.3 degrees degrees Celsius at 7 a.m. on Thursday morning. Student Union Asia and other youth organizations have called for Bihar Band on Friday. Union Railway Ministry had formed a committee to look into the concerns raised by the aspirants of alleged irregularities in Railway Recruitment Board NTPC Stage 1 exam results. However, ASA General Secretary and MLA Sandeep Sorov remarked that the committee is a conspiracy to postpone the matter till the Uttar Pradesh election. Actions. Meanwhile, UP police arrested two people and lodged a case against around 1,000 unidentified persons in connection with the alleged writing and blocking of the rail track at a local railway station by some job aspirants. Six policemen were also suspended for using unnecessary force during the incident, which took place on Tuesday. <laughs> A 
a minor girl was allegedly kidnapped and gang raped in Rajasthan's Dungarpur by boys of her own school. The incident is said to have happened on Monday when a minor of Standard 9 was kidnapped by two boys of her own school. The boys took her to the forest and one of the boys raped her. Deputy SP Rakesh Kumar Sharma said that the incident of gang rape was registered on Tuesday in the Bichiwara police station area. Meanwhile, the survivor has been admitted to the hospital and is under treatment. Deputy SP Sharma said that the police have recorded the statement of the survivor and her family members. The accused will be arrested only after further probe and the search for the accused boys is still underway. At least six people died and four others were taken ill allegedly after consuming superior's liquor in Bihar's Bugzar district on Wednesday. Reportedly, two of them have lost their eyesight. The incident took place at Ansari village under Murar police station of Dumrao block in Bugzar district late on Wednesday night. Bugzar superintendent of police Niraj Kumar Singh said that the administration has received information about the death of of six people at Ansari village and the police are looking into the matter. Meanwhile, those critically ill have been admitted to the Dumraul Subdivisional Hospital for treatment. <laughs> Mumbai police have arrested seven persons and seized fake Indian currency notes with face value of seven crores, busting interstate gang involved in printing and distribution of counterfeit notes during a search of the car. Crime branch found a bag containing 250 bundles of counterfeit currency notes in 2,000 denominations worth 500 crores. And while interrogating the four, the four car occupants, the police got the information about three more people. Accordingly, a police team conducted a raid at a hotel in suburban Andheri West and arrested the trio. And 100 more bundles of 2,000 denomination was found. In total, fake currency worth 7 crores was seized. It also came to the light that the inter-gang was operating a racket of printing fake currency notes and distributing them. India recorded 2,86,384 new COVID-19 cases in the last 24 hours. India's active caseload stood at 22,2472, with positivity rate at 93.33%. Meanwhile, 3,6357 recoveries were reported in the last 24 hours, taking the total recoveries to 3 crores, 
The center is planning to cap the price of COVID shield and Covaxin at Rs. 275 per dose after the two COVID-19 vaccines get regular market approval from the Drugs Controller General of India. While there is emphasis on keeping the prices reasonable, the government may allow a service charge of Rs. 150. Under emergency use authorization, Bharat Biotech has priced Covaxin at Rs. 1,200 per dose, while Serum Institute of India has priced COVID Shield at Rs. 780 for private hospitals. The price includes Rs. 150 service charge with regular market approval expected by next month. The government is now addressing the issue of pricing of the two vaccines. The National Pharmaceuticals Pricing Authority has been directed to start working towards capping the price to make the vaccines affordable. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will host the first India-Central Asia Summit in a virtual format on January 27. During the summit, the leaders are expected to deliberate on steps to take forward relations to newer heights as well as the evolving security situation. The virtual summit will see the participation of the five presidents, Kazakhstan's Kasim Jormat Tokayev, Uzbekistan's Shakhbat Mirziyovev, Imomali Rahman of Tajikistan, Turkmenistan's Gurban Ganguly, Berdin Muhammadov, and Sadir Zaparov of Kyrgyz Republic. This will be the first engagement of its kind between India and the Central Asian countries at the level of leaders. The Ministry of External Affairs has said that the summit is symbolic of the importance attached by the leaders of India and the Central Asian countries to a comprehensive and enduring India-Central Asia partnership. U.S. biotech company Moderna announced on Wednesday that it has begun clinical trials of a booster dose of vaccine designed specifically to combat the Omicron variant of coronavirus. Trials involve a total of 600 adults, half of which have already received two doses of the Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine at least six months ago and half of them have received two doses plus the previously authorized booster dose. The booster dose specifically targeting Omicron will therefore be evaluated as both a third and a fourth dose. The company also reported results on the efficiency against Omicron of the booster that has already been authorized. Russia's second seed, Daniel Medvedev, staged a stirring comeback from two sets down on Wednesday to reel in Canadian 21-year-old Felix Ogre Eliasim and claw his way into the last four at the Australian Open. Medvedev looked out for the count as ninth seed Ogre Eliasim, Elich Fi held match point in the fourth set, but the world's number two battled back to win 6-7, 3-6, 7-6, 7-5 and 6-4. This was Medvedev's third five-set victory in 10 matches going the distance at Grand Slams. Medvedev will face CC Pa in the semi-finals at the Australian Open for the second year in succession.
Thank you viewers, that's all for now. For more updates, keep watching NLTV, Sob Manolo Gawas.